this will be our first lesson in Module 4 about factoring trinomials. The first type we're going to look at are the very simple ones that look like this. Normally it's going to be a variable squared plus a, a number times the variable plus a constant. Notice there is no coefficient here. Having a coefficient there makes it a little bit more complicated and we'll look at that next time. Okay, in my classes, normally I would have them actually work these problems by FOIL, although sometimes we don't use the FOIL word. Eureka doesn't like that. But I already worked these. I worked each one of these binomials times binomials, and I used the distributive property of FOIL, and I got the answers in yellow. What we're going to do now with factoring is we are going to take the actual trinomial that is in this form that we explained earlier and factor it, which means to make it look like a product or for it to be a product. So this would be the problem and this would be the answer. We're factoring it by expressing it as a product. Now if you notice, if we look right here in what is going to be our answer, we know that x times x is x squared. I also notice that 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So 2x plus 3x is 5x. I also notice that 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, same thing here, f times f is s squared, this 8 and this 9 add up to 17, giving us a 17f in the middle, and 8 times 9 is 72. So when I go to factor these, for example, number 4, I set up my factor answer as if it was a binomial times a binomial. The first part is pretty easy, f times f is s squared. And right now, all of our signs are, are addition, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep with addition. And if we think about what we just talked about, the two numbers that I'm looking for for here and here should add up to 17 and should multiply together to give me 72. Sometimes those numbers just pop in my head like, oh, I don't know, 8 and 9. Sometimes we got to come up with them. So, for example, if that didn't just pop in your head, you can say, all right, 72. That's 1 times 72. That doesn't add up to 17. 2 times 36, that doesn't add up to 17. 3 times 24, that doesn't add up to 17. 4 times 18, that doesn't add up to 17. 5 doesn't go into it. Let's see, 6 times 12, that doesn't add up to 17. 7 doesn't go into it. 8 times 9, oh, that adds up to 17. So those would be my two numbers, 8 and 9. And this next one I'll do a little bit faster. Okay, this one. The first part is pretty easy, especially when the signs are all addition. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 24 and that add up to 10. I know they're staring me in the face, but let's pretend like it's not there. Think about it a little bit. I believe that those numbers are 6 and 4. The, right now, the order does not matter. I have just factored this trinomial. Now here are six trinomials that we're going to try to factor. If you understand what I did on the last page, go ahead and press pause and give some of these a, a try. I'm going to actually just do number two, four, and six for the sake of this, uh, this video. So go ahead and press pause and then press play when you're ready. Okay, number two. Let's change the color. Okay, all I gotta do is figure out these two numbers here and here. I'm um, looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 20 and that add up to 9. That's pretty easy. It wouldn't take too long, but I'm gonna come up with just 5 and 4. So this is my factored answer for number 2. For number 4, let's just start it off. Let's see, two numbers that multiply to 24 that add up to 11. Let's suppose those two numbers don't just pop in my head. Let's see. 1 times 24 equals 24, but those don't add up to 11. After 1 comes 2. 2 times 12 is 24, but that doesn't add up to 11. After 2 comes 3. 3 times 8 is 24. Those add up to 11. That's my winner. Either order doesn't matter. That is my answer. Okay, we'll do number 6 really quick. multiply 
multiply to 42, add up to 13. Let's see. Actually, I can't do this too quickly. Let's see. I know it's not 42 and 1. Let's see. How about 2 and 21? No. 3 and let's see, 14? No. That's 6 and 7. They do add up to 13. That's my winner. 6 and 7. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I am done. Now, in my class, this would have been four more FOIL problems, or multiplying a binomial times a binomial. They're in the light yellow, and notice I already have the answers in white. So why don't you go ahead and uh, press pause and see if you see any patterns there, and go ahead and press play when you're ready. Okay, hopefully what you're noticing here is that each one of my original problems, they had minus signs in both places, and you'll notice that for the actual trinomial answer, this always ends up being a plus because a negative times a negative is a positive. And this always ends up being a minus because like negative 2t plus negative 5t is negative 7t. So when we have a trinomial that looks like this where the, we have a plus sign here and a minus sign here, the plus sign tells me that my two signs have to be the same. Like remember on that last page, which we'll go back to, the plus sign here told us the signs are going to be the same, same what? Same plus sign. But now on this, it tell, this plus sign tells me that my signs are going to be the same, same what? Same minus sign. See? Same sign, but they're both minus. Same sign, but they're both minus. This plus is telling us that we have the same sign, or that we need to put the same sign here in Okay, but other than that, you will notice that these two numbers here are still adding up to this middle coefficient, and they still multiply together to give us this last number or this constant. So that stays the same for this type, where it's a variable minus and a variable minus. We still have one more type that we'll look at in a little bit. All right, so here are some examples. I'll, I'll go a little bit faster because I'm getting a little bored. I can't imagine that you're getting bored as well. So let's see. Let's look at number four, and we'll do number five. If you want to try to figure the, those out yourself, go ahead and press pause, and then press play when you're ready. Okay, I'll do number four now. This plus sign here tells me that my two signs are the same, so it's either plus, plus, or minus, minus. So then I look here, I see a minus, and that tells me it's going to be minus, minus. But since my signs are the same, it's going to be the same as before. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 34, that add up to 19. Hmm, sounds like 17 and 2 to me. You put it in either order, I don't care. So that is my factored answer. Okay, moving on to number 5. Again. Signs are the same. Same what? Minus sign. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 40. And they're going to add up to 13. Okay, think about it. 5 and 3 seems to work for me. So there we go. By the way, one thing that I've failed to mention is, if you want to check and make sure you're right, take this, multiply them together by whatever method you want. Don't tell Eureka I said FOIL, and see if you get the trinomial. If you did, then you did it right. Alright, now here's the last type. Go ahead and take a look at these. My class already did them. Uh, we multiply both of these binomials together. Take a look at the problems, how they're set up, and then the answers and see if you see anything. Press pause and come back when you're ready. Alrighty. What you hopefully notice for each one of these is that each binomial, one has a plus sign and one has a minus, okay? This one has a minus plus, this one has a minus plus, this one has a plus minus. For some of them, the big numbers with the minus and the little numbers with the plus. For some, the big numbers with the plus and the little numbers with the minus. It doesn't matter. These are all the same type. One, ha one binomial has a plus and one binomial has a minus. So, let's take a look. So, this will be our problem 
and this would be our answer when the instructions say to factor. So you'll notice that for every single one of these, for your trinomial, when there's a minus sign here, your two signs here are going to be different because a positive times a negative is a negative, or a negative times a positive is a negative. So when you see a minus in front of your last term, then you know one sign is going to be plus and one sign is going to be minus. Which one is which, it doesn't matter. Now you'll also know that these two numbers here still multiply together to give us 28. But notice these two numbers don't add up to 3. They subtract to give me 3. These two numbers right here multiply together to give me 15. But they don't add up to, to negative 2. They subtract to give me negative 2. Okay? So that's what we got to keep in mind. So let's look at a few examples. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do 1, 4, 6, and let's say 9. If you want to try those four, press pause and then come back. All right, so first we will do number 1. No, it's going to start off with x and x. This minus right here tells me that my two signs have to be different, so right away I'm just going to put a plus and a minus, or a minus plus, it doesn't matter. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 12, and that will subtract to give me 4. Let's see. 1 and 12, no. 2 and 6, I believe so. Now here's the important thing. I can't just put these two numbers anywhere. So that's where I look to the middle. Since the middle guy ends up being positive, I need to put the big number with the positive. It's going to be x plus 6 times x minus 2. So notice when we do FOIL, a positive 6x and a negative 2x adds up to a positive 4x. Okay, number 4. Scooby dooby doo. This minus sign tells me it has to be different. So I'm going to put a plus and a minus. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 20. And since my signs are different, they're going to subtract to give me 1. Sounds like 5 and 4 to me. And now, since my middle guy needs to end up being a positive 1x, it's a positive 1x, I'm going to put the big number, the 5, with the positive. So it'd be x plus 5 and x minus 4. If you don't believe me, go ahead and multiply these, and you will get the original problem. Moving on to number 6. La -di -da. I know my signs will be different because I see a minus sign right there. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 48 and will subtract to give me 16. Hmm. Uh, tw 24 and 2, no. 6 times 8 is 48, no. 1 times 48, no. 2 times 24, no. 3 times 16, no. 4 times 12, no. Okay, this looks like all the possibilities, so I'm thinking that these don't, this, this won't work. This fooled me for a little bit, but these two numbers don't subtract to give me 16, they add up. So right now, this polynomial would be considered to be prime. It can't be factored, at least all the ways we know how to factor so far. It turns out it really is prime. It cannot be factored. Okay, so now let's go on to number nine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 48 and subtract to give me 13. Well, that last thing I remember was the 16 and the 3. Those definitely subtract to give me 13. And since I want my middle term to be positive, I'm going to put the big number with the plus. Otherwise, this would, if I did it the other way, this would end up being a minus 13a if we, worked, if we actually multiplied these out. So this is actually the solution. Okay, now we try these four right here and see how this goes. Let's see, I know I can start off with n and n, because n times n is n squared. 
This tells me my signs are the same, so it's either plus, plus, or minus, minus. This tells me to go with the minus. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 12, and that will add up to 13. I believe 12 and 1 will work. And I'm done. Next one. Okay, this minus sign right here, that's where I always look first. It tells me that my two signs are different, so I just right away I'm going to put a plus and a minus, or a minus and a plus, whatever suits your fancy. So therefore I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 32, and since my signs are different, we'll subtract to give me 4. 8 and 4 pop into my head. Now since the middle guy wants to end up being a positive, I'm going to put the bigger number, 8, with the plus, and the smaller one with the minus. If you go ahead and multiply these out, you will see that it works out perfectly. Moving on to the red one. Put it in, put another M. My signs have to be different, so I'll put a plus and a minus. My numbers have to multiply together to give me 42. And since my signs are different, subtract to give me 19. After a little bit of thinking, I'm thinking of 21 and 2. And since the middle term has to end up being a minus or a negative, I'm going to put the big number with the minus. And we are done. And the last one. Doop -doop -doop -doo. Okay, these were the really easy ones where everything was plus. But it's not plus because it's plus plus. It's because this tells you the same. And then you look here and say, oh, same plus. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to give me 46. And that add up to 25. I'm going to have to think about that. Let's see. 1 times 46. No. 2 times 23. Winner. And we are done. Now our next class, we're going to look at problems that have coefficients out front. And this makes it exponentially harder. Well, not really. It just makes it a little bit more complicated, but we can handle it. See you later.